There we go. It's been a while since I've been on here. Heard y'all was looking for me. So here I is. Here I go. <clears throat> Alright, but enough of the uh, fun shit. What's up, everybody? It's your boy. Here to do what I have not done in... Damn, has it been like three, four months? Something like that? I don't know. But here to talk about some uh, stuff that's been in tabloids, trending topics, all that good jazz. So... I'm not going to keep you off very, very long, mostly because I got some shit that I got to do that anyway. So, pouring myself a cup of Long Island. Now, I would I would use a vape, but I, I can't hit the vape right now only because this thing is... What's up? The vape is acting up like I'll show you, like... Okay, so the moment I say it's acting up, it want to sub... Well, it's still acting up, but fuck it. All right, vape's working. So, y'all already know. What's up, sophisticated home? How you doing? So, y'all already know. <laughs> I know. Again, my stuff on that crazy and shit. Whatever. But y'all know how we do this shit right here. So, normally, well, not even normally. So, first prayers and our condolences. I don't. I didn't get the full story, so I do apologize. But um, prayers go up for London. London has... Uh, when. I believe it was London. I know it is Europe. I believe it was London has had some um, a trying couple of weeks. Just recently, there was a uh, fire that happened in a, I think they call it a high rise. I think it was maybe like 50. Yes, this will be uploaded to YouTube. <laughs> I know, I know. Okay. <laughs> so, 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 but um, I believe it was a high rise. I think they say it was like 25 floors, roughly 500 uh residents that stay there and something happened i believe with the refrigerator where the refrigerator um i guess caused a fire to happen the building itself was primarily made out of plastic there were no um what's the word i'm looking for <laughs> yeah work sneak watching um what was it there was a there was no fire alarm system so when the fire went off, no one really knew about it until the fumes got to them. There was no sprinkler system. So no way to truly um, stop this from happening, which was horrible to say the least. And I, like I said, I don't have the number of people that died, but it was quite a massive number. There was even a story of a woman dropping her baby down to a young man for him to catch to save the baby's life. And luckily he caught the baby. And, um, I mean, we really want to, like I said, pray, like prayers and condolences to the families, you know, may, um, may all of them rest in peace, rest in power. It is such a sad thing. And it has been said that the uh, building was predominantly, uh, people of the uh, Islamic faith and a lot, like it has been rumored, speculated that. There wasn't a freak accident, but I don't even want to touch that. But I do just want to say, you know, again, condolences and prayers to all those who lost their lives that faithful day. And I want to mention it, but I know there's more still coming out. So if more comes out, I'll revisit it next week. So now that we got the that shit out of the way, y'all know we started with the heavy, heavy, heavy shit. Then we move into everything else. And I'm going to try to keep this. As lighthearted, there is going to be a portion where we're going to have to sit here and talk some shit. And we might have to agree to disagree, but that's okay. But that's okay. So first, let's start off with, you know, uh, Karuchi. She has been granted a permanent restraining order. Now, I don't, I don't know how restraining orders and shit work, but uh, for what I've read... Um, Reports are saying that she was granted a five-year restraining order against Chris Brown. I don't know if five years is actually permanent or not, but she's been granted that. <clears throat> We've all known uh, Chris Brown has had his, um, how can I say, physical uh, altercations with females. Rihanna being one that we know about. Karuchi being another. Y'all know the chat list ain't sexy. I hate having chat list. I should have did this shit before I came on. I apologize. But... <laughs> But uh, she's been granted a five-year restraining order. And crazy thing is he did not show up in court, which I find to be crazy. Now, before I move on to uh, my very next topic, all I'm going to say is this. Well, fuck, he can't stalk her now, but he can stalk her ass on claws. 
And I have to watch it. I didn't even know that shit even existed. James Coldwell had asked me, like, are you watching this? I'm like, what? I don't know what it is. So I'm out the loop. I think only the first episode is there. So I'm going to try to get caught up probably today. No promises, none, but I'm going to try. But congrats to Karuchi. If we want to, well, not even if you want to, but for her having her protection, like I said, that's the last thing we need is for, you know, any more domestic violence type situations to be going on. Now, let's talk about Steve Harvey right quick. If we're going to say right quick. So, Steve Harvey, he is definitely under fire. He's under fire because of his flint jokes. A flint joke, I should say. I don't want to say joke. Well, it might have been jokes. But, um, he ends up... (laughs) We must. We must. But, um... Pretty much, he, uh, or first and foremost, they were talking about sports. Y'all know I don't do sports, but they were talking about sports. I guess the guy from Flint was really going in on him, and I guess it was somewhat lighthearted and whatnot up until I don't know if Steve got his feelings hurt or if this was truly just a joke, but he pretty much told the young man to go have a brown glass of water. Now, yeah. Yeah. Now, before I give my opinion, I'm going to go a little bit further. Now, Steve, I have it pulled on my computer right now. So Steve Hart released released a statement saying this morning callers and I were cracking chills about the Cleveland Cavaliers lost to the Golden State Warriors. I'm a huge Cavs fan. The call and I were simply trash talking our teams and cities. Simply trash talking about sport. I made a joke directed at him as he is from Flint, a city for which I have great affection and respect so much that I've devoted a full hour of my daytime talk show to raise awareness for the Flint water crisis. I also uh, pressed then candidate Hillary Clinton to offer a solution to what I called one of the great catastrophes of modern times. The and the, I guess, yeah, I guess I said, the and the caller laughed as my joke was taken in the context it was offered, any attempts to craft this into anything more severe, I'm sorry, anything more serves no one. Steve Harvey. And then the Flint mayor, she wanted um, Steve Harvey, well, wanted him to apologize. And also Little Miss Flint, who has also been on his show, wanted him not only to um, offer up an apology, but to bring his ass to Flint and kind of live, uh, I guess, a day in the life. So, my take on this is half and half. On one hand, I can't be too, too mad at Steve Harvey. Only for the simple fact that he does have freedom of speech. But with freedom of speech, we have to understand that, hey, what you say have consequences. Like I said, I've said some shit (laughs) on the YT, and it's definitely had its consequences. It is bad when little Miss Flynn has to put your ass in check. I do agree. So there is a freedom of speech thing at the same exact time. I understand how sometimes you speak so fast that things come out. Now, it had this been a one-on-one conversation where there were no bystanders or this wasn't being recorded, I could give him a pass, but I can't. Now, I'm not going to sit here and talk about how he be cooning. I'm not going to do that. But what I will say is he was definitely wrong because even though he made a joke at this particular person, you have to remember you're affecting a whole group. Everybody in Flint, Michigan, yeah, we're not feeling it. And my thing is this, on some real shit, I think the only thing that would, well, first and foremost, he's not going to live this down. But the only thing that would get people back on his side is if he took his ass to Flint and he actually drank that brown cup of fucking water. I think that would bring some of this down, but he's not going to do it. And one thing that fucking sucks is since Steve Harvey has the support of the group that he want to have support of so badly, he doesn't really care until his bottom line is affected so until his cash flow gets affected 
he doesn't fucking care. And he's even trying to, he's even saying he's confused by everything. Okay, well, bro, you made a comment. It may or may not have been taken out of context, but you shouldn't have said it. True, he does have a long hit. We, we, I, I understand. I understand he has a long history of foolishness. But again, writing the check, your ass got to fucking cash it. But here's the thing: with most celebrities and whatnot, until that bottom, till until until they bottom line is affected. Ain't shit gonna be done. Even with Bill Maher, you know, I'm not gonna talk about him. But even with his situation on saying that he's a house, you know what? Now, I'm trying my best to not say the word. I'm trying to wean myself off saying the word. I say, I say it a lot. You know, I'm, I'm hood. You know, shit happens. But he didn't see nothing wrong with it until the, you know, outrage happened with it. And he saw that it was about to affect his money. So then that's when he went and offered an apology Set down with Ice Cube, this, that, and the third, and you see he's not currently on the show anymore. Despite the fact he still has his trademark, so he's still making money, but he's not, you know, on air the way that he once was. So when that shit start affecting this right here, then that's when people gonna sit here and start backpedaling, pussy popping, James Caldwell, and that is when they're gonna offer up an apology. Now my thing is. Hey, he should just pull the fucking Nene Lee since Jen to pretty much let, let y'all know I said what I said. But he would never say that. But moving on. And I mean, here's the thing. Let's be real. Like, I stopped fucking with Steve Harvey after his uh, Don't Trip series uh, where he has Don't Trip, uh, He Ain't Through Me Yet, and Still Tripping. After that, I stopped fucking with Steve. I, I really did. So I just want to throw that out there. So The Bachelor, a show that I don't watch, is has pretty much, well, I guess the uh, most recent, I guess Bachelor in Paradise, the most recent one, has uh, been shut down. I don't know if it's been aired or not, but it has been shut down because of sexual misconduct. So pretty much what has happened is um, a boy by the name of Demario, he was on there, and um, the, uh, I guess, Bachelor season 21, I guess they call her a villain, I think her name is Corinne. Olympios. Now here's the thing. First and foremost, first and fucking foremost, we we history tells you tells you about what happens when you fuck with a. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I'm back on the scope. I'm trying to get back to everything. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. Got my tea in hand, but don't judge me. But we we know about bitches named Corinne. I mean, y'all remember Corinne Stephens? Hello. But those two, I know, I know, I know. Let it's been work. It, it's really, really been work. But, but like I said, I'm trying to get back to the whole normalcy of things. But these two were called performing sexual acts in the pool, which calls for. <laughs> oh, oh, it's on the Bachelorette. Ha ha ha. Well, like I said, I've never watched it because, I mean, here's the I really don't give a fuck. I think the only shows that I really watched were Flavor of Love <laughs> and I Love New York. Again, pure ratchet trip, but that's the only reason I watch it. Don't judge me. But from TMZ, <clears throat> this is uh, what was said. So last Sunday, the first day of production at the Mexican Resort, Demario Jackson and Corinne, whatever the last name is, we're told by producers one of the storylines would be two of them hooking up, especially entertaining because both are considered villains of previous shows. So right there, we all know most reality TV shows are scripted. So, yeah. <clears throat> now, it says, we're told the two met at a bar and alcohol was flowing. Mm -hmm. And I'm just pulling shit so y'all can see me pull it. Right, I'm back, bitches. But alcohol was flowing. The Mario says, <laughs> "Same here, just pure fun." <laughs> just <laughs> the Mario says, Corinne jumped in his lap and started making out with him. Big Brother Survivor, etc. <laughs> folks get busy. <laughs> Big Brother, I haven't watched that. I like Big Brother and Survivor. I only seen like like one season of it. It's okay. It's okay. But says, jumped in his lap and started making out with him. We're told there were lots of intense rubbing. Hmm. Demario says, Corinne then suggested they retreat to the pool 
with the cameras rolling, which is <clears throat> like key here. They took off their clothes, started making out, rubbing, touching, and fingering. These are in quotations. He says she put her genitals in his face and he began licking. How many licks does it take till you get to the center of the uh? Uh. But we're told this allegation is a big point of contention and others disagree with his account. He says he was not able to engage in intercourse because of alcohol. <laughs> Dead. Demario says the next day everything was fine and he and Corinne were actually getting along. But on Tuesday, they were called to the exec executive producer and told one of the show producers had seen the film and was uncomfortable with what they shot. <laughs> it was so, so pretty much with the, um, I guess, current Caesar of The Bachelor in Paradise that was being recorded. I guess the uh, bachelor and one of uh, the females had uh, engaged in some, um, I won't say antiquate, but they was touching, kissing, rubbing. They both were drinking. You know, she put her, you know, put her, you know, you know what, in his face, facing the place, as Forrest Rocks like to say. He began to do some things, but he did not have sex with her because they both were drinking. So because alcohol was involved, everything was okay until they got pulled into the producer's office. And I guess the executive producer or one of the fucking producers, whoever, told them they were uncomfortable with what was shot. All right. <clears throat> so according to a news report, Corinne is saying that she was sexually assaulted by DeMario because she was too drunk to consent to their sexual contact. <laughs> no, no, not super, <laughs> not super head, but... But I did say we all know about. Let me stop. Let me stop. I can't be. I can't be. I can't. I'm trying not to be messy today. I'm trying to behave. So, the producers claim they heard Corinne was so drunk during the encounter she had no idea what was going on. Heard. The uh, so of course everything was filmed. <clears throat> the producer in question that was uncomfortable with the shit had not seen the footage and its investigation is ongoing <laughs> be messages like this story and it's a couple things i'm I, i'm going to revisit because this shit is fucking hilarious <laughs> so corinne tells her friends she has a boyfriend and he wouldn't um have done i'm sorry she wouldn't have done what she did especially with the cameras rolling to jeopardize her relationship. We'll come back to it. <clears throat> and the sources say with the footage, they appeared, she appeared fully engaged, but Corinne doesn't blame DeMario because he was drunk as well. She blames production and has lawyered up. Now, I wish we were done, but we're not. So an eyewitness claims that's not what happened. So I'm going to read what the eyewitness said to TMZ. So one female cast walked right by the pool when Corinne and Mario were hooking up and saw her with her top off and her legs wrapped around him. We're told Corinne yelled out to the passerby name and seemed very with it. <laughs> I, I agree with the get, get rich quick, I do. And also said that she was coherent. The cast member told others she would have done something to break it up if she felt Corinne was too drunk. Furthermore, the cast member says cameras followed her when she walked by, so the whole encounter should have been taped. And we see, and the female cast says Corinne talked about the DeMario hook of the next day because she was upset her boyfriend back home would find out, but she never heard Corinne say anything about it being non consensual. And then something else came out, and this is from E! News, that um, 
another eyewitness or now a witness claims that she, Corinne, was the aggressor, stating that the day of the incident under investigation, Corinne did not display any change in behavior from what was observed by the cast of her season. Corinne forced herself on three male cast members when they were unable to consent in addition to engaging with DeMario. After the incident, everything seemed fine. There was no mention of being hurt. However, when producers tried to cut her off from drinking, she got upset and said, watch, watch what I'm going to do. The cast is not encouraged or forced to engage in any behavior or to drink alcohol. Producers check in to make sure the cast is comfortable and accommodate, you know, their needs as requested. So, before I sit here and I break this shit down, what the fuck do y'all think? Because I just saw somebody say, I just saw white woman privilege, get rich quick scheme. You can't hear me? Can y'all hear me? Yes, no? Yes, yes. Just let, just let me know, because I'll kind of... Okay, so, all right, so. I, I, I just had to ask right quick. Well, see, here, see here's, here's what's funny. It seems like this whole thing possibly, well, not even possibly, this whole thing was fucking planned. Because first and foremost, if she has a boyfriend, right? Ain't married or whatever, but if she has a boyfriend, and first, okay, let, let's backtrack all the way. This shit's scripted. So the Bachelor and the Bachelorette is scripted. Number one. So we got that, right? Number two, she has a boyfriend, right? So if this shit is scripted and she has a boyfriend, then why is she on this show? And then she is making out with DeMario. And not just that, they both were drinking. Now, let's continue this shit, right? Cameras were rolling. So if it appeared <clears throat> that she was so drunk that she couldn't, that it would have been one of those where it's a big no-no. Why didn't production jump in and cut that shit right off rip? Because we do know and watch a reality show, because I watch a lot of reality TV, that if shit goes too far left, production will jump in. Why does production jump in? Because production does not want to get sued. That's the fucking reason. They don't want to get sued. So with all this being said, and then <coughs> they, oh, oh, well, yes, they wanted the footage, but if they didn't think that she was consenting, then, you know what I'm saying? Now, again, with all the training that I get by virtue of my job, we are taught that <coughs> as soon as somebody has a sip of alcohol, you don't do it. You, you stay the fuck away because you can't consent when you had one drink. And it's more of a protection type of thing more than anything. And unfortunately, we live in a day, not to my females, because <clears throat> my, my base is mostly females. I'm going to say this. I hope you don't get mad, but if you do, I just got to keep it all the way 1,000 with you. In the world that we live in, especially for what I do for a living, men are guilty until proven innocent. There's no fucking way around it. Unless you have concrete evidence that you didn't do it, you fucking did it. There's no way around it. And I've seen this happen to so many people. I've seen good people who could have made this shit a career next because of that shit. Now, let's be clear. I support the programs and everything in place, but... Mm. So, this shit seems very, very suspect. And then the fact that now, she not trying to sue DeMario, but she's lawyered up and she's upset with the producers. And also what I don't get is how the one producer that called them in because they felt uncomfortable never saw the footage. So if you never saw the footage of him, as far as Rock says, face in the place, if you never saw that, but you going off of hearsay, then how credible are you? And I'm not even gonna lie, I, I truly feel that she consented, she knew exactly what she was doing, and here's the reality. Who's gonna pay more? DeMario, now here's the thing for y'all who don't know, 
Demario's black, Corinne is white. Just throwing it out there. But who is going to pay you more, Demario or the producers of The Bachelor Slash The Bachelorette? I smell a come up. And Demario, because he's wrapped in this, he is demanding the footage and wants the footage to be in his hand to be played so he could be exonerated. Because again, this is one of those things where it's certain shit you don't want on you. And and I'm going to talk about this in a, in a little bit later. Hopefully I remember. If I don't talk about Candy, Real Housewives of Atlanta, and Rape, remind me to talk about when I start talking about the Real Households. But just that whole thing, you don't want that stigma on you. Because again, if we go back to what I was saying about um, Steve Harvey. When shit start affecting your bottom line, that's when shit get real. But again, his reputation and everything is now on the line. And I mean, hey, shit. That kitty cat did it to him. Oh, definitely. Definitely should have known better. And it would have been one thing if it was kissing. But the moment that she threw her legs on him and face into place, Forrest Rocks, it probably should have stopped. But here's what's funny. They didn't fuck. He just gave her head and he stopped because of, I believe, her being intoxicated and he being intoxicated as well. My thing is this. When the fuck do two motherfuckers, can, you know, getting it, you know, really into it, especially when you drink off that liquor. When the fuck you stop? I'm just saying I'm a dude. But most dudes ain't going to stop until they at least get the damn tip in. But you know what? This this getting a little this get this is going past PG. So I said my piece. I just want I just wanted to include y'all in that. But but that was my piece right there. You almost made me so much. <laughs> oh shit! Oh, we cut too we cut up too much on the motherfucking Sunday, y'all. We all grown talking. See, see, I'm a talk, but talk. But see, this this right here is more Periscope after dark. Say Sean Bradley. That, that that's his lane. Okay, that, that that is his lane. Especially, like I say, if y'all watch me, y'all know I've been abstinent, and I probably should not put my business out because not everybody knows this. It's if you don't watch my YouTube, but I've been abstinent for fucking thirteen years. No, lying, 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 lying. Map CC. I've been drinking 16 years. I've been abstinent for 16 years. <clears throat> so with that being said, I ain't really talking, talking. Okay. But what I am, <laughs> this is after talking. <laughs> Shut up, James. What I'm saying is this is up Sean's alley, not mine. But what I am saying is... <clears throat> Just speaking from a man's perspective, shit. If it's get, if it's getting this intense, most men not stop until they put their damn dick in. We we just being honest here. But with that, the fact that he didn't, that raises concern, and I think that's also why he wants the footage. But we gonna move on. We we gonna, we gonna move on. We gonna move on. So let's talk about Remy Ma and Nicki Minaj. Now I have not kept up fully with what's been going on with him, but I've kept up enough. Now I do know, I don't know what caused Remy. Wait, please must we? Yeah, yes, but but but, but here's, the, here's the thing. Look, a lot, a lot happened in this last week. I'm only covering this last week. A lot happened in this week. But I'm trying to keep a little bit upbeat, a little bit lighthearted, not trying to go into the gritty gritty. Because I want to do that. I'll be talking about Nick Gordon, son, his girlfriend, you know, pulling the Chris Brown on her ass, you know, holding her down, beating her for two hours and shit. Bills Cobby, you know, him being in court, the shit being thrown. But I ain't finna talk about that shit. <clears throat> I ain't finna do it. Okay. If y'all want to hear about those, y'all can go. Watch the Bond the Blue show. I think she talked about part of y'all gonna watch Forge Rocks' recent top of the blog. She talked about it. And if neither one of them did it, Ashy Miller, what it is. If y'all wanna hear about those who still, I ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna do it. 
Like I said, y'all know I got, I got the hypertension. I ain't finna read my damn blood pressure talking about those two incidents. But with Remy Ma, and Nicki Minaj don't really know. I'm trying to remember what, I think what happened is, <clears throat> I don't know who fell out with who first, but I do know that um, Remy did her song called Sheether, Body That Ass. Followed up with a follow single, forget the name of it, because it was fucking trash. Nicki Minaj dropped a uh, upbeat song, did a video, and had, um, what's her name? Rashida Ali in there. And if y'all watched the last season of Love and Hip Hop by New York, Rashida and Rashida Ali and um, Remy Ma have fell out. So that's one of those, well, okay, that was kind of grimy right there. And just that whole thing fucking ensued, right? Well, time had gone by, things had calmed down. So Nicki Minaj did a song, I forget who the fuck with who, because I don't, I don't listen to most modern music. I'm trying to get back into modern music. Real talk, anything that came out after, what, July 2013, if I didn't hear the shit in the clubs in Korea, I don't really know that it fucking exists unless it's an artist that I fucking listen to and I follow. And I will buy this shit and support them. Like, just recently, I've been I've listened to, hate to say it, one time, and that's only because I'm not there, so I don't know if I really get into it, but I did uh, listen to um, Mary J. Blige's uh, Grown, I think it's Grown Woman, whatever whatever the title of her latest album is, but I listened to that, but I've been blasting Latoya's Back to Life album. Fucking love me some Latoya. I have, every, I have all three of her albums. When fucking Back to Life came out, I was actually in the field, but I was still able to download that motherfucker, and right before the fucking shit popped off, Played that motherfucker. I am enjoying the fuck out of that album. But outside of ours that I like fuck with, I listen to, I ain't really listening to shit. So it is what it is. But that shit happened. <clears throat> Remy decided, I'm not Remy. Nigga decided to do, another, do a song. It was a collab with somebody. Strength of Woman. Thank you. That's what it was. Thank you. See, I, I sound so stupid. I sound so stupid. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> but did that so and that was just recent so here's the thing and i'm gonna even compare this to youtube beef you know because i've even said this to several people or when it comes to beef in general you feel what i'm saying i treat a lot of shit like children because most people just want attention if you ignore them eventually the shit is gonna die down even if they decide to come back a little bit later and do some shit, the shit will eventually die down. But the moment you respond, now the fucking fire has been rekindled, shit's going left, just that whole fucking thing. That's my stance on it, because here's the thing, and I'm going to keep it all the way 100 with you. <clears throat> Again, my ass is hood. I'm that motherfucker where you got some shit to say, like, we can say, here's the thing, I'm shady as fuck, I'm petty as fuck, I'm savage as fuck, trust me when I say but with my savagery, I'm that motherfucker where shit, if we having beef and you throwing an event, I'm going to show the fuck up. And I'll be sitting there, glass in hand, like, what's up, man? What's good? That's me. That is me. So that's why I try not to engage in a lot of that shit because I know how the fuck I am. And, when, and I can take shit to a petty fucking level. And I'm going to just leave right there. But I tend to let shit. I, I tend to just let shit fall by the wayside. Cause my thing is this: I'm that motherfucker where you want a stage, I'm gonna turn the damn lights off. But it, but I will, I will pull a fucking Tammy Roman on your ass. You want to get a rise out of me, bitch? I have risen, and when I fucking rise, when I sit here, when I tell you that I will sit here and turn the lights on in this motherfucking theater, not these lights, but I will turn the lights on in the theater. <clears throat> I will give your ass a fucking production, and I will show you truly. Why the fuck I'm a Capricorn? Why the fuck my ass is a fucking resident of the West Side of Chicago? I'm going to let your ass know right fucking quick. Right fucking quick. So that, that that's, that's why I don't get into the shit. But <clears throat> Remy did her shit. Remy let it go. Nikki decided she want to sit here and throw clap in that and even brought pap into it. I think had she just said something about Remy would have been okay. But the fact that she mentioned pap. Now did pap write the rhyme? I think he might have done it. But it's certain shit. Now, mind you, <clears throat> when it, love and war, when, when it comes to war, nothing is off limits. 
even though I feel this shit you shouldn't talk about. Nothing's off limits. Cause I'll let you know right now. I get in my fucking feelings. I'm coming for your jugular. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to cut your ass to the white me. I'm going to cut your ass. So I want that shit to fuck up. Okay. See, y'all done got me started. Y'all done got me started. <clears throat> but again, this is me. So with that being said, she brought up her, you know, uh, Remy's husband. So, <clears throat> and, um, summer jam, summer jam, you know, Remy decided that she was going to do some shit now. <clears throat> I believe it was back in 2000, either 2000, 2001, 2002, some shit like that. Jay-Z um, put up on the big screen some shit um, of, I think, Prodigy, some shit about the motherfucker, you know, a school class, dance class, some shit like that. Like, had the shit fucking posted. Well, Remy decided she was going to take a page out of his book. So, Remy posted a collage of Nick in one of an obituary and shit. Now, before that, you didn't have Queen Latif, I think MC Like Hard to be some other people out there performing. They even did uh, Unity by Queen. But Remy <coughs> took this moment to be like, you know what? Let me go ahead and just stick the knife in one more again. And did Sheetha. Now, people bad. People mad at Remy. I don't understand why you mad at Remy. Because again, <clears throat> had Nikki just let this shit go, we wouldn't be here. But the fact that you decided to take a jab at her and bring her husband into it, well, guess what? She sat here <clears throat> and went the fuck in on stage. Exactly. So, I'm going to give y'all about a good 30 seconds. How the fuck y'all feel about it? Y'all think Nikki wrong? I mean, not Nikki. Y'all think... Remy wrong? Is she right? Y'all team Remy? Y'all team Nick? I'm team Remy. <clears throat> Real talk. I'm team. Now, I will admit, Remy should not have done that follow-up song. She should, she could, she could have left well enough to fuck alone. You see, she performed Sheetha, not the follow-up song. I'm just saying. <laughs> team Remy. All right. So... We almost done. We almost done. Like I said, I'm not going to keep y'all here long. And then Bob came over. <laughs> like Remy can't say shit about True. Yeah, she 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 should have kept that second. She really should have. But hey, she, was, she was riding high. She was riding high. You feel what I'm saying? So I got a few more things to talk about. And well, more than a few. Maybe a couple. No few. Few sound about right. And then we're going to do the congrats. We're going to do the L and W's and then we're going to be gone. So I'm probably going to be here for another 15 and 30 because it's going to be one particular piece we're going to have to talk about. We're going to have to go back in Real Housewives of Atlanta reunion history. This past reunion and talk about some shit. But before we do, <clears throat> so right quick, I wanted to put this in the congrats, but I'm going to just talk about it right quick. Um, but Mike Epson, Kevin Hart, they didn't pretty much made up. Back in, I think it was, was it 2014? 2014, I believe. Um, Mike Gibbs dragged the fuck out of Kevin Hart. Speaking of which, I got, hold on, I got the tweets right the fuck here. Hold on. So, <clears throat> well, first, Kevin Hart. Well, long story short, it was um, Mike Epps that pretty much uh, said that he was overrated. So, Kevin Hart says people constant hate I'm sorry, people constantly hate is what motivates me to do so much better. That's why I refuse to let up. He said, that's called flexing at the real Mike Evans. Now, I commend him for at the motherfucker. This is Twitter here. I'm going to take my overrated ass back to work now. My work here is done. Boom. And then he continued to say some more shit. Mike Evans replied and said, at Kevin Hart for real, tell everybody that you sacrifice your manhood for fame, nigga. I said, I wasn't going to say, I'm, I'm reading what he said now. And you beg me to be, I'm sorry, to be open up for, for me before you got on some shit like that. And then he also said, if it wasn't for social media, at Kevin Hart for real, would not be present, he was forced on your fans through the web you go on to realize, and then they went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Okay, back and forth. But these two were able to, for like a better phrase, and kiss and make up. And <clears throat> here's one. Here's the thing: when it comes to men, men make up tend tend 
to make her faster than women. So, granted, that was 2014. We in 17, but look, they didn't kiss. They didn't make up. Time heals all wounds. We are moving past it. Moving past it. I must, I must say Real Housewives of Atlanta for last. For, damn near for last. Because <clears throat> I only got two other things before I talk about that. So, that was back in 2014 that they beefed. But they just recently made up. So <clears throat> now the two live crew is uh, going to have a biopic. So this is all based off of uh, Uncle Luke. You know, y'all know about Uncle Luke. He had a book called The Book of Luke, <laughs> and it was based on his memoirs. Mem. Okay, look, I've been drinking. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. But it was based on his memoirs, uh, and it was a uh, Book of Luke, Fight for the Truth, Justice, and Liberty City. Okay, so with that being said, that memoir is now going to be turned into a biopic. And with the success of, you know, Strata Compton and things of those natures, this is actually a good fucking look. So I would love to see it. <clears throat> but like I said, I like Uncle Luke. I don't know about y'all. I like Uncle Luke. I want to see the shit. So I can't wait for the shit to come out. Again, that would have been the congrats, but I just kind of want to talk about it. So now let's go ahead and talk about the real shit. Real households of Atlanta. First, can you not ties them? Can you not? <laughs> can you more ties the knot? See, this is why I could be on daytime divas. First, I'm a divo, but I get too fucking tongue tied and shit, so that's why I got my own little thing over here with y'all. Over here. But initially, insiders had claimed that she had gotten married. Tamara Tattles had um, said that she did. <clears throat> you didn't. You didn't watch his last season. Okay, we gonna we gonna talk about it. We gonna talk about it. But uh, Tamara Tattles had reported that she had gotten married. I believe it was it see Saint Lucia, but she didn't plan on having the relationship on the Real Housewives of Atlanta, and. <laughs> But um, <clears throat> apparently the sources had told Tamara Tattles that um, her husband and his adult children are uncomfortable with, uh, I guess, the glare of reality television. So that's why um, he wants to keep this uh, relationship uh, a secret under wraps. I'm not going to say that she was successful with it <clears throat> because there have been many people to get married and it's under wraps. Like, again, back to my boo thing, Latoya Luck. I love me some Latoya. So Y'all ain't got that album. Go ahead and listen to that shit. But um, her marriage was... Here's the thing. I didn't even know she was fucking married. <laughs> I don't have the guy's name. Like, that's kind of how, like, under wraps, under wraps the shit is. But the two of you looking and got married and divorced. And I saw that shit. I was just like, wait, 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 wait a minute. So she really wanted to. So she could have kept the shit under wraps. And even now I'm sorry Kenya Moore had told uh, People Magazine that she is married and um, I was going somewhere with this but it is what it is <clears throat> oh, that's what I want to say but apparently it's come out that uh, Bravo is upset because they weren't there to shoot it and we don't know how this is going to affect when they start shooting because I believe they start shooting within the next uh, month or two and this and the fact that she's married and doesn't want to show this could fuck with Kenya a little bit. But this was the one season she really didn't have drama with the other women. So chances are Kenya Moore is probably going to come back and have drama with the other women. We set, we shall see. We shall see. Also, with our Real Households of Atlanta News, Nene Lees has signed back on to have a full time contract. So she will be back for season 10. She's um. <clears throat> posting pictures saying that she is the queen but uh sweetheart I think that uh Candy has uh taken your crown so I don't know if she's gonna be coming for Candy this season we shall surely see what I will say though and <clears throat> take this shit how you want to uh Nene I don't think you really want to come with I don't think you want to come at Candy now you got that brand new nose and we know Candy be ready to fight and Candy Chose not to put her damn hands on fucking Fatra, which we're gonna talk about. So she might have to pick up aggression. I don't think you wanna do it, sweetheart. I don't think you wanna do it. 
But we will see Neely's back. And it is also rumored that also uh, Kim Zosiak is back. <laughs> they have, they have, but a hand in the past. They, they have, they have. So if Cynthia comes back, we can. I, they're definitely going to film together. I don't know who else is going to film with um, Nini. Now, <clears throat> let's go ahead right quick and talk about this reunion. Now, I didn't, I didn't really film much of the reunion, and when the reunion. The part that really fucking mattered happened. I was out playing, you know, fucking, you know, field games and shit. So I was able to catch on the back end. And I didn't want to come back and not talk about it. I already been talked about and shit. But, um, <clears throat> I will say. <laughs> I read Fate. See, you beat me too, but I did read that Phaedra's coming back. I heard about that tape. Is it here's here's the thing. Here's the thing. <clears throat> I did hear that Phaedra had gotten fired. I don't want Phaedra to get. I don't. I don't want her fired. I want Phaedra to come back. Why? Cause don't nobody want to film with this bitch. I want Phaedra to get drugged by her baby hair, by that weave, by that new growth up and down the Atlanta street. Verbally. Like, that's what I want to see. I really want to fucking see it. Because everybody got some shit to say. I want to fucking see it. I really do. Yes, yes, just just drag her the whole damn season. Just, just the whole damn season. I'm out of tea. I'm out of tea. Now, I want y'all to know, I'm not out of tea because I'm out of tea. Because I got two gallons of tea pre-mixed in this motherfucker. I'm for real about my shit. But I only put so much in here, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna start drinking all uh, my, my my fucking beet smoothie. That's gonna have to supplement right now. But <clears throat> I want I want her to come back. Now when the shit happen, because right now we we just gonna talk. Right now we gonna talk. We people, we family, we here. We gonna talk. <clears throat> I spoke with another YouTuber, not going to disclose who the YouTuber was, but I spoke to another YouTuber. Me and this YouTuber, we had a um, <clears throat> disagreement about candy, a disagreement about candy. And long story short, my thing is I felt candy didn't go in hard to fuck enough. I really felt candy could have went the fuck in a hell of a lot more. See, here's my thing. <clears throat> and I've said this on the YT. And I've said this to other YouTubers that I fuck with. And I've even said this to people that I, you know, I have friends in the real life since we like to use that. And here's my thing. <clears throat> if we fall out, no one needs to know that we fell out. No one needs to know. I'm adult enough. I'm 30. I'm adult enough to be able to be like, you know what? The shit happened. It is what it is. Other people don't need to know that we fell the fuck out. But I make it clear to any fucking body. First and foremost, I watch everybody. I do. Especially what the fuck I do for a living. I watch everybody. Because you never know when the motherfucker going to sit here and pull that dagger out and want to stab your ass. I've seen this shit out. <clears throat> Trust me in the fucking... it would be nine years in August. And nine years I've been doing this shit. Now YouTube, I've been doing this shit. I had a few motherfuckers come for me, and when I sit here and I have, you know, my facts, when I have them receipts, when I have them facts, motherfuckers back the fuck off your ass real fucking quick, and I let they ass know, do you want to play this motherfucking game? Because <clears throat> I guarantee you, you got more to lose than I fucking do. Now, it's not to say that I go into friendships and whatnot doing that, but again, just naturally being a Capricorn. We watch everybody. It's just what the fuck we do, and we don't, and it's not one of those where we do it, take notes to get a bitch back. That's not what the fuck we do. It's just we watch everybody. Shit, even my fucking family. <clears throat> Most of my family, I wish to fuck some of these motherfuckers would try to sit here and spray me. Because I'm I, when I say I'm about to sit here and I'm about to go all the way to fuck off. I'm telling you, that's, that's not a theatrical show you want to fucking see. <clears throat> so with that being said, yes, between Candy and fucking Phaedra, there was a lot that was said and they knew a whole lot. Now, a lot of people mad at Candy because of what her clique and what her mother and uh, aunt said about Phaedra. Hey, <clears throat> they can say what the fuck they want to say. Candy, you know, shut that shit down. Yes, yeah, she could have. 
<laughs> Hold a fight all time. I'm, I'm t- exactly, exactly from one cap to another. But, but, what, but it's one of those where people got mad at Candy because she ain't shut that shit down. But people failed to realize that one day when Candy knew Mama Joy about to go just a tad bit too far, she grabbed her like, mm, Mama, sit, sit your ass down. Come sit down. <laughs> you, you doing too much. Doing too much. Sit down. But on the reunion, you know, when the shit finally came out and people couldn't, like a lot of people said that Candy was putting 20 on 10. Not the case. And what people feel to realize is when you have your character and you have somebody working diligently to destroy your character, because there's a saying that used to be said way, way back when that your name is all you have, meaning your last name. And I like to say your name and your word are the only two things that we have in this world. In this day and age, that is it. Your name and your fucking word. And at this point, it's really your fucking word. And when either one, more or less that word turns out to be fucking face, don't false or whatever, nobody wants to fuck with you. <clears throat> so the fact that you have fucking Phaedra sitting here dragging that ass through the mud, you can't be mad that Candy was like, you know what, fuck it. <clears throat> We're going to talk about some shit. And I was so mad because Candy did not go the fuck in, even on the reunion. Now, mind you, did I want Candy to drag a hoe? Of course the fuck I did. Did y'all want Candy to drag a hoe? Like, I wanted Candy to reach out and touch. I swear I did. Candy had another level of restraint. Like, I have a level of restraint, especially in a professional setting, but she had a level of restraint to Candy. But Candy had even said, you don't want to put all your business out there. <clears throat> I ain't like Phaedra either. I didn't either. But she even said, like, I could have put your business out there, and I didn't do it. Like, she like, don't make me put all your business out there. I'm looking at Candy like, please put that shit out there. Please fucking do it. And she didn't do it. I respect Candy for that. But my thing is this. As I've already stated before. I let a lot of shit go. But when you decide you're going to come for me. Now Sean has said it best. You can't tell me when the fuck to come fight. You can't tell me when to sit here and you know. I'm going to do it on my own time. But when I do you best believe that I'm going to make it worth your while paraphrasing and again like I, as I said I will if, when a motherfucker want to perform I turn the lights off on your ass but when I decide that I want to perform <clears throat> I don't know exactly why why they fell out in the first place but I think the falling out had to do when Apollo went to jail Todd decided to house some of Apollo's shit and I think that maybe just maybe Phaedra felt um, hurt because she felt that Candy should have been <clears throat> on her side and not house his shit. I think that's where all of this started. And what you said, and what you said. So <clears throat> that being the whole thing. But what my whole thing, like, I wanted Candy to put all of that shit the fuck out there. <clears throat> I don't believe that. I think Candy was being there the most that she could. I think that when the shit popped off, and I think that when the divorce was going on, I think Phaedra wanted Candy to pick a side, but it's just like, okay, well, we're fucking friends. And a lot of that shit, even if I go back to the YouTube shit, that's why he's like watching the food. Okay, you can like Phaedra. You can like Phaedra. I, I ain't mad at you. But even with the YouTube shit, <clears throat> and I'm not going to go into fucking details and shit, okay? You know, but I'm friends with people who don't fucking like each other. But I make it perfectly clear. <clears throat> we're not going to talk about the other person. We're we not going to do that. Cause I, I'm 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 not that I'm not that dude. I'm not finna sit here and listen to you drag somebody and then listen to the other motherfucker. Drag. I'm, I'm I'm not finna do that. And I damn sure ain't finna fucking sit here and take a bone and carry bone. <clears throat> it's not what I do. That's not my shit. So I don't like that shit the fuck at all. You you feel what I'm saying? But you have some people that feel that well if I fuck if I don't fuck with this person you don't fuck with this person. That that that's that's high school shit. 
that's high school shit. I don't, <clears throat> I don't deal with high school shit. I, I'm, I'm too fuck. I, granted, I have my moments. I'm too damn old. But what I'm getting at is, ex- ex- I, and I don't, and, and I fucking don't. It's just something that I don't fucking do. Because at the end of the day, I don't want to be stuck in the middle because when shit blow the fuck up, it'd be like, oh, well, I told so, well, I was talking to so-and-so and I said this, <clears throat> but it's almost going to be like, oh, so you, so you going to sit there and let them motherfuckers talk about, mm-mm, mm-mm. <clears throat> so, but again, what, going back to what I was saying to this one YouTuber, and this is just for any fucking body that I'm fucking cool with. If we fucking fall out and we ain't friends no more, that's fucking cool. But I get wrong fucking to you. The moment you decide that you're going to fucking try to spray me, you're going to see just how fucking petty and how savage my ass is. Fuck Shady. <clears throat> my fucking Twitter handle is the Monarch of Shade. But I'm also Prince Petty. But I'm also the fucking Sovereign of Savage. <clears throat> you ain't ready for it. You ain't fucking ready for it. <clears throat> But I wanted to talk about that. <clears throat> but for all of these reasons, I want Phaedra to come back. And I want them to drag her ass up and down the fucking mud and then fire that ass. But <clears throat> since we've been talking about candy somewhat indirectly, before we get into the congrats, I do want to mention that Escape has a reality show heading to Bravo. So, Mona Scott Young is going to be the executive producer of the docuseries. I think it's 10 or 11 episodes and the whole thing is, I guess, them getting back. Yes, <clears throat> Sovereign of Savage. I might have to go ahead and change my fucking Twitter handle to that before somebody try to take it. <clears throat> but I will say, actually, James is the Sovereign of Savage. I'm just going to say that, James. You you an upstage, you motherfucker, but I'm, I'm going to claim the title and, and, until you take it from me. I'm claiming the title until you take it from me. But um, the show will be on Bravo, which is great. Because you would think Mona Scott, VH1, but since Candy is on Bravo, and Candy's part of Escape, <clears throat> it's going to be on Bravo. So kudos to Mona for getting this fucking money. And it's supposed to air in November, right after the Housewives of Aladdin. Again, I assume that it's going to be the group getting back together and trying to release this uh, latest album. So let's go ahead and get into the congrats. <clears throat> We're almost done, you guys. I ain't got no more titles on these nights. So, congrats to John Legend. He has recently won a Tony Award as a producer on the play, uh, on the revival play, or play revival, called uh, Jitney. So, congrats to John Legend. <clears throat> Nick Cannon. Yeah, go ahead and call the turn. Uh, Nick Cannon, uh, while and now his series has been renewed for a ninth season on MTV. We do know earlier this year that he had uh, quit America's Got Talent because he felt that they were uh, stifling him, that whole fucking thing. So that's good that he is still getting that money. So <clears throat> kudos to him. Malcolm Jamal Warner. Y'all remember him from um, the Cosby Show. He has welcomed his first child. He's keeping everything hushed. So we don't know the gender. We don't know the name. But congrats to Malcolm. We'll get to babies in a second. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Congrats on me for coming back to Periscope. Yay. And YouTube. And YouTube. I still got one video to do for YouTube. Uh, Mr. Chilaki uh, tagged me in the uh, positive tag, so I'll still have to do that today. I didn't say within a week, so today. Barack Obama presented Jay-Z with the uh, Songwriters Hall of Fame Award, so congrats to Jay-Z on that. And speaking of Jay-Z, the Carter. The Carters have welcomed their new babies. Now, we don't know the genders, even though someone had came into the uh, hospital with the uh, pink and blue balloon, so we're thinking boy and girl. We don't know for sure. We don't know the name. But apparently this happened on Tupac's birthday. So congrats to the Carters on their new bundles of joy. <clears throat> so with that being said, the show is done almost. We have to pick who took the L and the W. For the week. So what do y'all think? Who 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 y'all think to the L? <clears throat> I mean, if I had to pick, I'm probably gonna say Steve. <laughs> we on the same page. I- I'm gonna say Steve took the L. What y'all think? And actually, I gotta try to figure out who the fuck I'm uh, Steve. I'm gonna try to figure out who the fuck gonna take the W. 
Actually, I'm gonna be real. I, I'm gonna be nice with. Okay, so we are gonna say Steve took the L. Steve, okay, Steve took the L. Who took the W? I'm gonna be nice, and I'm gonna say the Carters took the W because they've now welcomed uh, two more children into this world. I'm gonna be nice, or we could just say Jay Z. Okay, fuck it, Jay Z. <laughs> so 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 fuck Bianca. J. Okay, I, I, I guess we're gonna do that. So. L of the week, Steve Harvey. W of the week for Jay-Z. So, I want to say thank you guys so much for joining. I should have turned my damn suit event on. I didn't do it. Whatever. <clears throat> but thank you guys so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I had fun. We'll do this again next week. Hopefully, I have more, some more shit. And I really want to be more vibrant. I don't want to really talk about the whole down and out shit because ain't nobody got time for that. So, Thank you guys for watching. This will be up on YouTube. <clears throat> Get bonus points for <laughs> So thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all. Please rate, comment, subscribe, and share. I will see you guys Sunday. Same time, same place. Peace.